unqualified to be in this realm because I don't have the volumes of the Batman comic books committed <laughs> to memory. How much do you really need to be able to play one of these roles? Well, uh, if you've been an actor for a very long time, like I have been, and, and if uh, Andrea is such a brilliant director, she sort of knows the voice in her mind, I think, the actor who can bring a three-dimensional quality to a character that's otherwise in a two-dimensional realm, and I think that's what she does so well, and her meticulousness with the details as you're going through it eliminate any uh, concerns you might have. Uh, you know, we come together and read it and bring it to life, and, and then they animate it, and then we come back in and, and do ADR post looping to fix little glitches or usually add the efforts and grunts and groans and impacts and stuff like that. And she's so meticulous that you just feel completely in good hands. Now, are, are you playing, the, do you get to do the man bat in this version? Do you I, get to do the actual man bat creature? I do not. Dr. Langstrom is the provider of the serum, inventor of uh, the man bat. And, um, he is motivated to do so by being, his daughter is, is being held captive by Deathstroke. Would you have liked to play the I always enjoy a good monster. <laughs> I mean, I'll admit, I was a little disappointed when I kept speeding to the end of it. No transformation. <laughs> All right. No, it just, it was fun to do it anyway and to bring humanity to it. And, uh, you know, an intelligence and a, and a, and a concern for the, for the daughter and, and all the, yeah, the, you try to sort of give the, the genre what it needs at the same time as being a, a real person. Was there anything that surprised you in this role or, or in the, on the in process? Um, not that I recall. I've done a lot of things since then. Yeah, I, I know this is like a year ago. Them. And now I'm, what I'm looking forward to is being surprised by the end result of what the animators did to bring it back to me. Uh, Xander, I'll never forget your stint on 24 as Mason, how you went out in a blaze of glory on that show. Was that, was that a satisfying moment for you getting to work on that show and how we... How he went out, or would you have wanted to have done more with that character back then? Oh, it was interesting. Joel uh, had, uh, you know, written the character as a, as a guest star in the pilot, and uh, the fact that uh, I met my wife on the show and, and uh, was happy to be written into more episodes. Um, worked out because he enjoyed writing for the character and, and what I brought to it and uh, and I was doing other things that year as well and, and then he offered a series regular role and I was I was always scared of being committed I was always scared of commitment and I, I love doing movies and so I was just a little cagey about committing to a series and he uh, he said well what about if um, what if we agree to kill you? <laughs> said, that sounds exciting. He said, because here's the idea that we were going to pitch to you. Because we knew you don't want to, you know, become a series regular. For one season, we get you inhaling airborne plutonium in the first episode or two, and you have 24 hours to live. And I just, they didn't know when it was going to result. And in my demise, it was just inevitable. And then they were getting very tired of the, of the bomb storyline. So it was sort of, Two birds, one stone. It happened a little bit sooner, but I couldn't have asked for a better way to answer this. Will there be anything else on the, the booth at the end? Because I was a huge fan of that. Yeah, I was and am too. And uh, Noel Bright, the executive producer with uh, Kuguru and, and uh, Tornante, um, Michael Eisner's company there is eager to get back into it and it's just a timing thing yeah. I'm, I'm doing Salem now and uh, that finishes the, 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 the wrap date on that keeps pushing back so it's uh, it's unclear when we'll be able to but we really want to I love that show no I was I was blown away by that when I watched the first season I just like yeah. shotgun the entire thing I thought it was so great 
and we want to make sure we up it and make it better the next time around you know, instead of just repeating it because it's so sure. magical we want to wear out its efficacy by just churning them out. Would you want to break the formula of actually leaving the setting or do you think it's essential to stay at the booth? Uh, that's been a big subject of conversation because I could see very interesting ways out, but part of the thing that's so exciting about it is it explores the vast and endless real estate within the confines of a booth in a diner. I kind of think that's what makes it special. Yeah. How much does uh, how much does the process of uh, I mean, you've done so many different uh, voiceover sort of performances? How much does that uh, personally sort of uh, I guess create interest for you in, in, in either animation or comic books or any of the kind of stuff that you're that you're asked to do? I mean, other than professional. Yeah, I, I think I was attracted to animation from the beginning because for the same reason I was attracted to acting. I love transformation. I love taking on a different persona and having an audience not know that I'm that guy from the other thing that they saw before. So it's fresh and new and, and uh, with animation you get to be a, a whole different physiognomy. You can transform your voice. But it, I love looking at the, at the drawing of a character and going, that's it. And that's what I did with Langston as well. I saw their drawing and Phil's image and I went, I, I get, I get who this guy is. Very instinctive. Thank really, you very really. Much for your time. All right. Thank you, Thank Leander. You.